I have something to share with you. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I have been following along with a project that has been inspired by Dee Dee Willingham, the magazine idea playground. That's where we've glued together several magazines. Mine's a little bit larger. Dee Dee cut hers in half. And she has a mini magazine idea playground. I have painted out pages and I've been following along some of the ideas that Dee Dee has suggested and I have been doing some of my own fun things in here too, such as I did a fun caricature portrait of Dee Dee. That was fun. I also did one of Gina Aaron's back here. I call these my appreciation pages. The most recent one that I did in here was what I have been inspired by Julie Faith Ann Bowser and she did lace pages and I have been doing some lace pages. Let me find one where we've cut We've cut the pages. Now, I was just playing around with this one. In fact, I think this was my very first one. I want to do more with those. I did a mind mapping, image mapping page where I ended up with this one. I think this was one of the first ones pages that I did in this idea playground. And then back over here was my mind mapping and don't ask me to explain all this this is just the who what when where why and how that Dee Dee encourages us to ask these questions and this is all to come up with ideas I don't have any trouble coming up with ideas I have a lot of fun doing these pages this was where I was playing with Shannon Green's rainbow technique where you swipe rainbow colors down here on the page and then you do stenciling over it and then I collaged over that. I have been doing some more mind mapping on my own. Now I'm just going to show you a little snippet of it. Oh my! <laughs> For those of you who are not detail minded, this would probably explode your mind. <laughs> but let me tell you, I have so much fun doing this, and this just did not happen all at once. I've been playing with these pages. I'll explain a little bit to you about it. I am mind mapping a female character and a male character, and I'm thinking about people here, their personality, their education, their marital status, where they live, the children, their hobbies, their occupation, pets, their intelligence, what their favorite things are, what, what they do on social media, income level, what is their personal style, what does their hair look like, what is their spiritual inclination, who are their friends, what traditions do they have, what, and then of course they need a name, and then I've gone into like body shape and, and some of the other things. All of those things that I'm mind mapping for my female character, I am also doing mind maps for a male character. Now this is all going to lead up to a visual image, but not yet. I'm just playing. I'm having fun. And each one of these little alphabet characters points to another mind map. And I'm not going to show them to you because I don't want to explode your mind, especially for those of you who think this is just, well, too much. <laughs> but it's not too much for me. To me, it's not enough. There's just not enough. <laughs> but I'm going to have more fun with this, and it, there will be more fun to it. I, I went back in and added the colors and, and drew all sorts of little arrows and, 
and big coloring on my page and there there's more to it than this but this is how I'm having fun doing different types of project in my magazine idea playground art journal other than just doing art I love doing art you can see I love art but I love coming up with ideas and this is the whole purpose behind getting ideas, playing with them, uh, uh, trying different things in your art journal. Don't just, oh, I'm going to paint a tree and paint a tree and, oh, I look at this art journal page I made. It's reaching further down deep into yourself to find the creativity that's within yourself. That's the best way I can explain it. Well, while I've been working on all of this and having fun with this, and I'm having 823 pages of fun, well, I went back over and was watching more Dee Dee Willingham on her channel. Here on YouTube, there's a link to it in the description box below. Lo and behold, she started another project. There is another project that she's starting that will be called the Society of Idea Collectors. Do you think I could resist joining that? No way. I had to join it. I watched the two, first two videos and I go, wow, this is right down my alley. Now, I will say this probably is not down everybody's alley. If it's not down your alley, don't go down that alley. But I enjoy doing this. Now, talking to Dee Dee, she said, well, Mary, you've got enough pages in your idea playground and there's enough blank pages here that you can do your Society for Idea Collectors within your magazine Idea Playground. But after watching her videos, I decided to go with their suggested journal, which is a composition book. And I did that because the composition... I'm going to bop here to a blank page. I did that because the composition books have blank paper, and I will be doing a lot of writing to write on these painted papers that I've already painted, I'm going to need a fairly light background, which this happens to be. But not everything in here is a light background. So I decided, yeah, I'm going to go do a composition book. So I listened to Dee Dee's videos. And she will be happy to know that Mary took notes. <laughs> because I do that when I'm interested. i got to, as she says... Write it down. I got it written down here. Write it down. But anyway, I jotted down the thoughts that she was communicating in her video. And then I just kind of subtopic her thoughts here in the margins. And then, as she was... I'm not going to explain all of this, except to say that in there, I... In there, Society for Idea Collectors Journals, she encourages picking different topics, and such as she shared words and uh, quotes, that type of thing, things that you are interested in. Well, those happen to be two things that she's interested in, that I'm interested in, but she encourages you to add your own. So I went through and I listed as many topics that I thought would fit my my journey. And then I just made a great big scribbly list here. And then I circled the ones that I wanted to be my main topic. And then I found that some of these, like I'm interested in writing letters. Well, writing letters could be a subtopic of writing. And so would be stories. I'm interested in writing some stories or just short little narratives. Zines. Uh, Z-I-N-E-S. Dee Dee was talking about writing a little zine. Doing a little zine. And so I thought, well, that would fit under the topic of writing. Let's see, another one that I chose that I thought was uh, applicable to me was, uh, well, social media. Uh, I don't think that was one that she listed, but if you think about it, my social media is 
course, my YouTube channel, which is really my main social media landing spot. But I've just recently joined Instagram. I have a Twitter account, more or less, to announce my videos that I upload. And I've just started doing live sessions on my channel. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Periscope, but I don't scope. <laughs> so there's a lot of social media going on out there, too. So that's something that I participate in my life almost, well, every week for sure. Almost daily, but every week. So this is my list of ideas. And so I made a list. And then this was how I narrowed it down. And then I put little subtopics here. And then I chose colors. And I'm using the big market markers for colors. Now, why did I choose colors? Well, because I'm not putting tabs in my journal. I don't think she uses tabs in hers, but she put tabs in it as an example. But I'm tabbing mine in a different way such as you go to my interest of art and I drew a little margin here and then right in the center I wrote art and I figured out there are a hundred pages in here and I have 15 topics and I left myself 10 pages of free space at the beginning because I'm going to be wanting to do more writing and more more just general journaling in the front but every topic I assigned a color and that is assigned in the margin here so that when I'm getting ready to jot down an idea or something and I want to go to activities I can easily find it see there's activities and here's activities and I can just kind of right here I can just thumb through it really easy that way so that's what I've been working on this week. And then at the beginning of every topic, I'm listing subtopics. Now, when I get in here and start jotting down some of the ideas I have, I mean, this is just the setup. Uh, let's say I have images as one of my subtopics for art. Well, images can mean a lot of things but it could mean collage, it could mean going out on the internet and looking for images in the public domain of famous people. I do that a lot when I'm drawing my faces. I have faces here, design, of course art journaling. Let's take art journaling. My primary art journal for 2017 is my composite art journal and just today in the hangout there was a question about how to bind a journal with loose sleeve and Gina Ahrens gave a really good suggestion for that and even though it was to another person I'm going wow that'll work really well for binding my 2017 composite art journal so I'll put down here art journal idea and I'll probably draw a little light bulb and then I'll put binding and then I'll jot down what it is so when it comes time for me to think about binding my art journal I will have had that idea down there or maybe by the time I do that I'll come up with another idea for it ideas for the prompts I'm in the my year 2017 Facebook group and Next week, there's going to be a new August prompt. I have no idea what it is, but when it is, I generally think, well, what am I going to do for it? And then I could just kind of jot down little ideas that come to me. Now, doing something like this is not for everybody, but I do believe that if you get ideas, kind of like a dream journal, we have dreams at night, and we wake up and they're gone. And I feel like sometimes that's the way it is with our ideas. Inspiration will strike. But unless you record that or do something with that inspiration, 
you'll forget it. It'll be lost. It may come back to you. Yeah, it, you may have that dream again. You may get that inspiration again. You may remember it, but there's a good chance that you won't. Uh, there's a good chance if you're too busy to do something like this, if your life is so full that this doing something and not even going to this whole trouble, just getting out a blank notepad and just writing it down, not doing all this organizing that I'm doing. I'm doing this because it's fun. But if you just do something, jot it down on uh, a post-it note and slap it on your page. That's one of Dee Dee's suggestions. You have it there. You have it there visually to look at. And it reminds, oh yeah, I had that thought. That's a real cool thought. I want to do something with that. And that visual, it's a visual reminder for you. So, that's just my thought on that. That's how I'm going to use this. I am really looking forward to working more on this journal. Just jotting down my ideas, my thoughts. I probably will not share a lot of this with you. I may on occasion, uh, if something fun happens and I want to share it with you, I may share, I may open it up and <laughs> and share it with you that way. I had in the past few years, I don't have it with me, I had what I called a figuring book. And that's really what this is. This Society for Idea Collectors was really a good example of how I used my figuring book a couple years ago. I would put down Colors, color palettes of something that I was going to use for a project. If I was going to do a stained glass page, I may sketch out, rough out, uh, rough design of how I wanted that stained glass art journal page to look. So, I'm just sharing this with you. I this this doing these types of exercises, even though it's not art. You're not getting your hands all painty and you're not designing and you're not going to have a beautiful masterpiece when you're done. But what you're doing is you're exploring and you're developing your creativity. And for folks who say they have no creativity, I say to them, you just haven't found your creativity yet. I believe everybody has an element of creativity in some format. In some fashion, you may not be artistically creative. You may be creative in another way. You may not be creative in the sense that you can draw beautiful pictures or even photorealistic pictures, but you may be creative in that you can come up with a really cool quilt design. You may able, be able to bead a necklace and create a really fun piece of jewelry. So there's creativity, I think, is a part of every person. I think that people who don't think that they are creative, their real problem is not that they're not creative. Their real problem is they haven't learned how to find and develop their creativity yet. And this, for me, is just one way to do this. And this is really working for me. It may not work for other people. People are different. We have different personalities. I'm somebody who personally, I love detail. Doing a chart like this, doing detailed charts like these for a mind mapping exercise, and I say, bring it on. Bring it on. I need more space. <laughs> My paper's not big enough. <laughs> So, but other people may look at this and say, oh, good Lord, close it fast. <laughs> and I really do think that has a lot to do with your personality. But that doesn't mean that if you have a personality that is not conducive to that much detail, that you shouldn't open a book when you get a brilliant idea and slap down at that idea so that you don't forget it. And maybe you close your book and you don't look at that for four months. Maybe it's a year before you open this book again and go, Oh, yeah, I had a really nice idea for a, for a character in a book. 
or I was going to write this poem about this, or I was, I just, this was a, going to be a really fun art journal page. I'm going to do it. And it just is enough to key in to your creativity. So uh, enough of that merry lecture there. I just wanted to share with you how I'm starting out on the Society of Idea Collectors. I really am inspired by Dee Dee Willingham's videos. This is just right down my alley. I'm having so much fun with it. And I would encourage you to go check out her channel. Dee Dee does more than idea collecting. She does beautiful, beautiful art. She draws portraits. She draws portraits of people. She draws animals. She does coloring book pages. She does wonderful, wonderful, fantastic art journals, altered books. She's just a totally inspiring person. Go check out her playlist. There's just so much to see, and she inspires me so much. I would encourage you to go check out her channel if you have not found it yet. So that's all I have to share tonight. As I said, I probably will not be sharing this like in a series of videos or anything like that. I just wanted to share with you my approach to the journal for the Society for Idea Collectors. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next page.